China calls them vocational training centers, purportedly integrating Muslim Uyghurs back into Chinese society. But there are reports of torture, cruel and inhumane treatment in Xinjiang, leaving family members in Canada to wonder if their loved ones are still alive. It's tough. It's really hard. Um, my own grandfather had been um, taken into one of these, you know, detention facilities, concentration camps for a few months. And after being released, um, he died shortly afterwards. Now Canada will lead an international effort at the United Nations next week, a joint statement expected to be signed by more than 20 countries. It's a bit late, but it's better than never, and I think that something needs to be done, and Canada is doing it now. A draft statement obtained by CBC News says we urge China to allow immediate, meaningful, and unfettered access to Xinjiang for independent observers, including the High Commissioner, and calls for the end of the arbitrary detention of Uyghurs and members of other Muslim minorities. This kind of human rights abuse uh, really is, uh, is, is tragically uh, enabling to other uh, other violent regimes around the world. So we have to we have to put a stop to this. This MP is part of a separate effort by 60 parliamentarians from 18 countries. They're calling on the UN to identify and hold accountable the perpetrators and secure justice for victims. This is an unprecedented coming together. That sends a powerful message because up to now, China has been able to bully the democracies one by one. But China is trying to shoot down the Canadian-led effort before it even launches, accusing Canada of covering up its own human rights abuses, including at residential schools. Some experts say expect more. I think that China will be very active over the weekend to rally uh, countries to its position, remind countries that if they want to, come to receive assistance from China, they have uh, to, uh, to reject this uh, proposal. Ashley, if China's not happy with Canada's position, what might that mean for the two Canadians, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, who are still detained in China? Well, Ian, a former justice minister says that these changes on the world stage could actually help free the two Michaels. Not only does Canada have the support of the U.S. and the G7, now these two alliances, one among governments, the other among parliamentarians. Canada, he says, is not standing alone. All right, Ashley, thank you.